Welcome everybody to another episode of Hot Seat Automotive Media Podcast. It's your buddy CJ here talking about all things automotive industry, the automotive enthusiast hobby, car guy stuff, gearhead stuff. This is the place to be to talk about all the things we love talking about in this hobby. And guys, I really want to just go on here real quick and talk about why your buddy CJ ordered a Tesla Cybertruck. So I'm going to come clean and let you know and kind of talk a bit about where I'm at in the process and the fact that I have indeed ordered a Tesla Cybertruck. So why did I order a Tesla Cybertruck? A couple things. Took a while for this thing to really capture my eye. I remember when it was released. Who remembers? It seems like forever ago. And all the hype and buzz about it, I was skeptical. I was still super skeptical of EVs. Not that I've you know, and I'm still kind of there. There's a level of skepticism, you know, uh, skepticism. Uh, but in all seriousness, this thing has grown on me. And I also wanted to take a bit of a wait and see attitude uh, and a wait and see approach to see if this thing was actually going to come to market. And in fact, look at it. I know a bunch of people who rushed out, put deposits on, you know, Tesla, God bless Elon Musk, the businessman. Uh, he created a buzz, uh, good, bad and indifferent, mostly good. Uh, and it's significant demand, people went wild putting their deposits down. I think somewhere on the order of 2 million folks have put deposits on the Tesla Cybertruck. That's incredible, folks. Think about that. People were just running wild, going online to put deposits on a vehicle that really hadn't even hit the streets yet. That was still concept, really in the incubator stage. So... I was not one of those people. I was not sold on this. I didn't know if it would ever come to market. But now here we are over the past weeks and the past months. Uh, Tesla Cybertruck is coming. They've started making deliveries. A couple things. Um, the MSRP is shaping up to be somewhere in the order of 50% more. Don't quote me on that. But for example, what they originally positioned this as at the, the original price point, Forget it. it. It's going up, you know, so there's that. I claim that's going to turn off a lot of people. That's probably going to cause some dropout from those that put an initial deposit on. If they haven't gotten the deposit back, when they get their emails that they're ready to config and confirm their build, a lot of those people may pull out. There's that. There's also been an economic downturn. Interest rates are currently up. We don't know what's going to happen there. I claim a lot of those 2 million folks, how, whatever the number is now, are probably not going to buy their cyber trucks. I still think they're going to sell the heck out of these, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, every single one of those people who put a deposit in are ordering. Now, maybe some new people are going to pick up those slots and, and just keep adding uh, and, and booking orders. We will see. We will see. Um, I, I, I've got a source that I spoke to, my secret sources. I will not divulge the source. But don't quote me on this. They've delivered somewhere around a dozen or so of these, somewhere around Texas. It's my understanding that these will start hitting the Charlotte, North Carolina area by March. Again, these are all unofficial uh, bits that I've picked up just from talking to people. Uh, but don't quote me on that, right? I still can't get a good handle on when I might be able to expect to get mine. But... Uh, why now? Why have I come around on the Tesla Cybertruck? I'll tell you. This thing is so ridiculous. It doesn't look like a truck. It doesn't look like a truck from this planet. It looks like something from a 1980s video game. It looks like it was influenced by the stealth fighter. It looks like it came from Halo, like the Master Chief. The Master Chief from Halo is going to drive in on this thing. It has ridiculous performance specs. I put an order in on the Cyber Beast, which is the top of the mark. Cyber Beast, just the name. Come on. Are you kidding me? Your buddy CJ wants a Cyber Beast. I'm so here for it. I don't know if this is going to be the worst vehicle to ever hit the market or the best. I don't know if this is going to be the most important truck you know, to, to hit the automotive industry or not, or maybe a failed experiment. I'm not claiming that I'm able to predict that. 
I want to be a part of it. I want to own one. I want to experience it firsthand. I want to get my hands on one as soon as I can. You know, I've got I've got a few cars on order right now. I will not disclose all of them. This is one of the cars. So we got some things in the works. I'll, I'll talk about those later. I think everybody's going to, I want you guys to be a part of my experience with some of this new stuff that I've got on order. But this is one of the vehicles I currently have on order. And it's probably right up there, top two that I'm most excited about. I don't know when this thing's going to show up, uh, you know, and, and they can't tell me. They currently can't tell me. And I think it's all speculation. Who knows what sort of supply chain manufacturing challenges they're going to have. I've seen, listen, I've seen all the videos. I've seen all the press. I know the panel fitment doesn't look great on the first few examples that are out there that have hit some of the, the, the automotive events. Um, you know, there was also some silliness. Now, there's footage of one of these getting stuck in some national park someplace. But a couple things on that. Guys, and I'm not defending the cyber truck. It is what it is. The, the truck got stuck and had to be towed uh, off of the terrain, the frozen terrain, whatever. But keep in mind that your Ford F-150, your Chevy Silverado, your Toyota Tacoma, your Jeep, newsflash, you can get stuck in that too. Just because you have four-wheel drive, A, doesn't mean that the vehicle is going to be optimized for all conditions. It's a big misnomer. People who don't really understand just because you've got all wheel drive doesn't mean you can go take on, you know, the tundra and, you know, and, and all the extreme off road scenarios. You also have to know what you're doing. There are methods and techniques. I have friends who are deep in the automotive and in, in the off road hobby and they still get stuck and they still break stuff. So seeing a truck get stuck, you're not a truck guy if you haven't gotten stuck. OK. That's first things first. So I don't discount the Cybertruck. I know a lot of people, just the haters, it's a hater thing, right? Uh-huh, look, the Cybertruck got stuck. Well, yeah, there's there's, study, there, there's steady Broncos and Jeeps and uh, Fords and Chevys and Rams and Toyotas and Pathfinders and everything else are getting stuck right now as we're, as we're talking here on YouTube. So that's just the reality of the, the off-road hobby. Uh, I don't know how good is this thing off-road compared to an F-150, compared to an F-250, compared to a Ram 1500. I don't know. But I'm also, I'll be, I'll be blunt. I'm not taking my Cybertruck off-road. Heck no. I'm not an off-road guy. I've had a lot of experience with trucks over the years. We'll talk about that in another episode. But uh, I don't claim to position myself as like a deep woods, you know, extreme off-road or a rock climber. That's not why I'm buying it. I'm getting my Cyber Beast to be used as a fun vehicle, an extreme vehicle, my first full EV. This will probably be my first full EV. We'll see how things play out in the next couple of years, whatever. But uh, I, I'm so here for it. I'm so excited. I want to know what it's like to own and drive a cyber truck. I'm just so compelled by it. We've all seen the videos. This thing's smoking the Porsche 911 uh, while it's towing a Porsche 911. Like, it's just ridiculous. And who the heck's going to do that? And I know it's a silly publicity stunt, but it's also real. Uh, the Cyber Beast is going to have incredible performance. I don't think it's going to be, you know, the most practical vehicle. I think it's going to be an interesting automotive car guy experience. Okay. I don't know how long I'll keep it. I may hate it. And if I hate it, I'll tell you guys. Real talk. Your buddy CJ gives it to you straight all the time. And I don't know, I may regret this, but I'm in for it. And I can't wait to get my email. I'm getting a cyber truck. Like that, that's my current plan. Plans are always subject to change. But guys, I wanted to just fill you in sort of my, uh, my top reasons why I've kind of come to the dark side. No, I haven't. I've always been on the dark side. <laughs> you know, uh, I always like kind of mixing it up. What do they say? If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. So if I'm going to go and check out this EV scene, I want the Cyber Beast. I don't just want a Cyber Truck. I want the Cyber Beast. And I'm so here for it. I can't wait to get it. And I'm going to share that experience with you. Uh, guys, what do you think? Have you ordered a, a Cyber Truck? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, are you dead set against the Tesla Cyber Truck? Do you think it's ridiculous? Leave your comments. 
Do you have an EV? Leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, tell me all about your experience, your opinion. That's the beauty of our hobby. Guys, the beauty of our hobby is that there's room for everybody and our opinions are what make it kind of fun. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it in a friendly, respectful manner. Of course, it's the only way to be. But uh, guys, I love you. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the episode. I wanted to go online here, go on live and talk to you a bit about the Cybertruck. What do you think? Give me a like and subscribe. Leave me your comments. Leave me your thoughts. I'll respond to all the comments I can, guys. You know that. Your buddy CJ signing out for now. Love you guys. See you on the next one. Peace.